All right, let's learn more about how this movement got up and running in this program. This is probably going to be the most content heavy lesson so far in the course, and very likely of the section as well. So buckle in and try to follow along the best you can. You're definitely not expected to know how to create scripts like these from scratch anytime soon. Please beg, borrow, and steal scripts like these from my resources, from the internet. I just want to explain to you as much as I'm able to right now so that you know how to read through some of these settings and tweak them to fit your game design ideas. Before I go into explaining things, let's take a quick look at how the movement works in this game in the first place. I can move my mouse up, down, left, and right to change my view. The gun follows my head and I can move forward, back, left, and right, and when I press spacebar, I jump. Now I have full control of movement in the air. Now I could tweak that if I wanted to, but right now I don't mind having full movement. It feels really good just to be really floaty. Great. So let's jump out of here for a sec, and I have a setting on under game called maximize on play. Side note, in this lesson, I'm gonna jump around pretty quickly. Feel totally free to pause and rewind at any point you need to. That's kind of the purpose of these videos in the first place, is that you can repeat things if you miss it. I have to have this on on my second monitor, otherwise the mouse does weird things, but for a minute I'm going to turn this off, and I'm just going to show you the game view side by side with the scene view, so we can really see what's going on here. My keyboard, left and right, moves the player, left and right, and forward and back in any which way. Left and right with the mouse, turn everything completely, but up and down only actually move the head and the gun up and down. The body stays in place, notice that? So there's some separate control functionality for those different components. We wanna make sure we understand how that functionality is working separately and how it all works together to create this whole playable experience. So we have three different scripts responsible for all of this stuff. I have this player movement script, I have mouse look Y script, and I have mouse look X script. I'm going to start from the beginning, and I'm actually going to disable these two deeper scripts for a minute, just to show you the first one. The first script is responsible for forward, back, left, and right. Notice my mouse isn't doing anything, now that I've disabled the mouse look scripts. First, before we talk about the script, let me explain this object. I'm actually in this project using something a little bit different than our previous work, something called a character controller. This is a Unity specialized um, component that you can look up and you can add it to anything that you want, a character controller. And what it does is actually allow some more built-in functionality to come up good up and running really quickly. The slope limit actually determines that degrees of slope your character will be able to move up seamlessly. The step offset determines the height of stairs that your character can walk up. We're going to skip these middle three ones for now. They're not relevant to what we're doing. But the first two, if you have any slopes or stairs, you can play around with it if you're interested in. I'm not going to show you right now because this might not be relevant to your projects. The radius is like the girth of your character, how fat or skinny it is. I'm just going to set this back to my original value and the height is self-explanatory. And it looks like we have this almost like a mesh surrounding the character here. That controller is responsible for determining these built-in settings, but it's not behaving like a collider. So those that type of functionality, like collisions and stuff, will have to do something separate, like add a custom collider around it. So I could, for example, add a box collider and then edit it to surround my character so that the, I can have collision detection on it. That would be nice and easy. Or I can add some custom colliders. We're actually going to see using multiple colliders on one object happening a little bit later in this very unit. I'm going to move the collider for now and just leave that character controller. We can interact with it to also cause physics-based movement as well. It's a pretty cool piece of functionality that we'll learn through exploration more over time. Let's dive into our script, however. I'm going to pop this open our player movement script. Please pause and review if you need any extra explanations. I'm gonna go through this as quickly as I'm able to. The first thing that I built here was a connection to my character controller. Right here, I see that it's already connected. How did I connect it? Let's say it wasn't connected before. My character controller component, I can just click on it and drag it into place. Now I have a direct connection to the character controller attached to this first person player. I now have direct access to it in my script. 
I've also provided a speed that I can customize here. I need to create my own custom gravity because the way I'm building this object, I'm actually not using a rigid body right now. I could have, but why not try something a bit different so we can learn more about how the systems of Unity are working. And of course I made negative 9.81 as my gravity value. Anyone who studied physics is gonna find this script to make a little bit more sense. Next, I need some code to check if I'm actually on the ground or on any object I wanna consider ground-like, like a box perhaps, where I can stand on it. I want to be able to actually get information about the ground. So I have this thing called ground check. Ground check is the object that I've built on my player. It's just a small empty object that I place right below my character's body. And I'm gonna use this as the position that I do a check for. So it's kind of like a, maybe a little bit hovery. I don't mind if my character hovers. I've actually left a bit of space on purpose so that it has a bit of a hover to it without actually having any feet or anything. And so the position of this object determines where the collision detection is gonna be happening. So I attached it, oops, I gotta click on my player here. I attached my ground check to that component to link them together. Then I have ground distance, which is gonna determine the radius of a check later and a ground mask. A layer mask is kind of a fancy term for a setting that I toggle about layers and every object we've talked about tags before hopefully those make sense a layer is very similar where i have some built-in layers transparencies raycast water ui standable is a layer that i have made now i can choose different objects like my ground that i've made it standable and my boxes that are standable i've set them to that layer meaning that they will be able to interact with things that are looking for standable layers. My character isn't standable. I don't need to stand on myself. And maybe there's other things like water or enemies that I don't want to be able to stand on. So I wouldn't give them that standable layer. Maybe they have a different layer for different types of processing. So what do I set for this ground mask? Well, with my first person player selected, it's actually going to give me a list of all the different layers in my project. And I just choose standable. That's the one I'm going to be looking at. Awesome. Then I have a Boolean for a toggle of whether or not I'm grounded. I'm also going to allow myself to jump. So I'm giving myself a jump height that of course I can change from inside of the editor. It looks like I did actually change it a little bit down here. Maybe I'll just match it up with the code for now. And there we go. We've set up all of our variables. Make sure you re rewind and review any of those settings if it didn't make sense. And let's dive a little bit deeper. We have three main methods being checked here in our update every frame. The first one is horizontal motion. This will be quick because we've already done this many times. We're gathering information about our axes for horizontal and vertical. In this case, my vertical is going to be forward and backwards and X is going to be left and right. Notice I made a little comment about global coordinates. I wanna make sure I don't actually set my movement to a new location on the screen because I'm gonna be teleporting then. I want it to be relative to my current position. So my move is going to be my transform dot right times x my transform dot right is a pre-built in amount that's going to move me left or right by a unit but i'm multiplying it by the actual input and the same thing for forward and backwards so i'm getting just a relative shift that in my character controller that i connected through my script i'm actually now able to use this functionality called move and in it i'm going to tell it how I want it to move. This is a relative direction where we're just we're shifting its current position plus we're adjusting it by the move amount times speed times time delta time like normal. Quick note on vector three math. I'm actually able to combine my X and Z values in one calculation. If I add them together, vector math actually determines the resulting vector completely correctly if I do it at the same time as if I do it separately. So this is a completely sufficient way of synthesizing what we did in multiple steps previously. Awesome. Next, checking jump. I'm gonna look to see if my button down jump, hang on a sec, get button down jump. What is that referring to? In our project setting input manager, we have this setting called jump. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Previously, we gathered horizontal and vertical axes, but what if I gather the jump input axis, which is mapped to the spacebar press? That's what I'm doing here. If I have some, the, one of the jump buttons set down and I'm grounded, that toggle is true, then what I can do is actually set my Y velocity, my vertical velocity to be some velocity value. This is based off of a physics formula where I actually can have my jump height I predetermined be reached by multiplying it by these factors using a square root. I'm not gonna get into the physics right now. It works, perfect. Finally, the application of gravity. I'm checking if I'm grounded in a new way. And this is a pretty cool piece of functionality that's a little bit more advanced, but I wanted to show you because there's lots of stuff we're gonna do in our next section involving things kind of like this with the physics system and casting kind of invisible objects to determine collisions. What I'm doing here is creating tiny invisible spheres that check for collisions with the ground mask. My physics class can do something called check sphere where it's making a sphere to check. It's a little bit like this. Imagine that I made a sphere in my project that was at the foot of my character. And this sphere is invisible, no renderer, but it still has a collider, I can see it. And now I can check for a collision on this sphere to see if I've actually reached the ground, but I don't see it. It's not affecting the way my world looks, but there's an invisible thing at the point of my ground check that is going to determine if I've collided with something. So how does it work? The check sphere is gonna be created at the point of my ground check object that I connected to my ground check variable, and now I can access its position. So it's going to be built exactly here. It's going to be built with a radius based off of this ground distance value that I can change over here, ground distance, for how much floatiness I want. And then I determine the layer or the ground mask that I'm interacting with. And I am checking for the ground mask that I def defined here, the standable ground mask. And I can change this later if I wanted to really easily, but now it's connected right here. And that's gonna determine if I'm grounded or not. If the check sphere that is at this position with this radius is touching that, is grounded will be true. Otherwise it will be false. Next, all that's left to do is to process the data. If I'm grounded and my velocity is less than zero, meaning if, I'm, if I touch the ground finally, but I'm still going downwards. Now, technically, I would probably logically wanna set my, my vertical Y velocity to zero. However, what you might find then is that it kind of can do it at a weird time and make your character a little bit wobbly and glitchy. So what we like to do sometimes is give it just a very small negative velocity, even when it's on the ground, almost like a little suction cup that just kind of makes sure that we snap to the ground really nicely. It's just a little tweak that is not the most intuitive, but it can make things work a little more nicely. And finally, we process this gravity. We're gonna set our Y velocity to add the gravity plus delta time. And then we're gonna tell our controller to move based off of this velocity that we've updated times delta time. And with that, we have that side to side movement and also the jumping up and running completely in a much more customized way than before. And in your games, it's gonna be up to you to determine, oh, nice collision there, how much you wanna actually control these settings. You could just use a rigid body and have a lot of it be calculated on its own in the background, or you can follow a process like this and really customize those settings. In the next video, I'm gonna split this up because it's getting really long. I'm going to show about mouse movement to wrap up this section on controls.